Right now is our last day in Germany, and we should tell the story of how we got to right here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. This is my first day. I check out the city, get used to the time change. New fashion. I discovered in Berlin. <laughs> So we did some other stuff in Berlin, but that's not part of this story. We did, however, take the Autobahn from Berlin to Munich right. for high end. We went very fast. That is a necessity, I feel like, if you've never done it before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Depending on your level of confidence. So we are... It's all about communication. That's right. So we're about to go to Munich. Back. 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 Oh! Hey, forward. Forward, 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 whoop, whoop. When DMX pulls out his camera. Yeah, that's a little bit of a dead end right there, huh? It's not my. It's just Google Maps, man. Sure, <laughs> this is, it is. We, we, Andrew started giving us directions literally two minutes ago. <laughs> oh, tell me if I hit something. Pretty, pretty soon here. After this light, the next right. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess wherever you can turn right. Uh, Sorry, this is a lot of turning around <laughs> when here. They, when they turn, you're gonna make a right angle turn on Bauschloss in the next. One. Now we're, no, we're at, now we're off the map. <laughs> Just go a little bit back where we were, to the left, like where we came, where we came from. Okay. This one. <laughs> yeah, there's no way through over there. So. There was no sign of being a street there. You can see it was there. <laughs> so avoid road closure. Now it's time. I didn't have motion sickness before. Just doing it. You're gonna turn right here. Name right. Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> Städte? Yeah. <laughs> and then we turn right. You're gonna do, you're gonna turn right on Harshdorfstrasse. Strasse. It's gonna be a right angle right turn. A right angle left turn. That is a right angle turn. Okay. How? Like this next little right turn thing here. This, wow, this is a nice feeling room. Today is the first day of high end. I am very, very excited for it. All right, what are we gonna check out first? Ooh, uh, 109. 109. Okay. I'd like to hear the 109. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, definitely. So, what is the one amp and DAC I bring to high end Munich? <laughs> You're going to make Kryn very happy. Yeah, Critical's going to be thrilled. But this is more because I just forgot to bring something else. <laughs> the pattern, the yeah. inside. Oh, it looks nice. The bigger cup. Yeah. Uh, the 99 classics were named like that because the, the cup has uh, 99 millimeters. This right. one has 109. Mm, right, okay. Okay. <laughs> That's not bad. Yeah? I think that's more trouble than you'll like. Well, I might want to give it a try. <laughs> yeah, but I, I I, think that I, I like that. Yeah? So, it took me a minute to find a song that I do. <laughs> I'll pull up something I, I'm very familiar with in a minute. So this is the Mise 109 off of the Oris. Uh, yes. I can't remember the name of that one, but it's the, the, the big one. <laughs> Thoughts? 
I like that. I like it quite a bit. It's a it's got a little bit of a V shape to it. Um, but like really airy, like trumpets and things, which like, like sizzly. Like V or U shape? U. Because yeah, more or U shape. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good way to put it. Um, very comfortable. More comfortable than the 99s. Significantly. Yeah. Very significantly more comfortable than the 99. Because this is bigger. Yes. This, I. Halo. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Cool. This is, uh, this is very good. I, this is, I mean, hearing it indoors here, it's like, yeah. uh, it's, it's necessary. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so this ha sounds like it has that kind of, kind of like typical Meze warmer tilt in general, mm -hmm. with like a little bit more presence there in the mid bass, upper bass. Yeah. But then kind of balanced out by really nice uh, airy treble. Yeah. Right. So it, it doesn't airy. sound overly thick. It doesn't mm -hmm. have that warm poo <laughs> yes. thing that I worry about. All right. You can, are you going? I'm rolling, yeah. Um, Antonio is like the European version of like Zach Merbach from ZMF. Like he is, yeah. Antonio is the nicest dude. I've one of the nicest people I've ever met. Hey, I'm DMS. You're watching the headphone show today. We're here with Antonio. Yeah, I feel like people just need to know how ridiculously cool Antonio is. Yeah. Like I don't think a camera can't convey it. No. Yeah. But if you ever get the chance to speak to him, you definitely should. I've been to headphone shows in the past, like headphone events, headphone trade shows. Never anything like this before. This was. A totally different this was like everybody's crazy science experiment like yes. super high-end like ridiculous speaker amplifier mm -hmm. whatever science experiment taken to like the craziest level with and a just, map that makes no sense yeah yeah <laughs> and just like you know, yeah <laughs> yeah should we review the stairs yeah how's the how's the micro texture hold on guys how are you doing pretty good, good see you again so there's Oh no. I'm curious if they can do this bass. Bass, bass audio. Bass. I don't know what the hell comes down for this one because I'll fall off my feet. Ooh. <laughs> Solitaire T. See, these are the things we don't hear about. We've heard about it now. Oh, yeah. Is that a wireless one? It looks like it. Ooh. Yes. Some of it was like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> I had that I had that moment a number of times. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, wow, what do you, what is happening? Andrew is enjoying himself quite a lot right now. It's electrical components and stuff. I get excited. So we're at the RME booth and uh, the RME booth and uh, DMS is listening to the new Neumann open back. Just uh yeah. Just a headphone. That's just a headphone. <laughs> That's what that is. All right. There you go. Um, we also did an interview with uh, Michael Zale that day. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I remember uh, because you first went and listened to that, and the and he had mm -hmm. the stealth there, but you were more familiar with Noir. So we grabbed the Noir. Yeah. I was like, can I swap to the Noir? He's like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rings the Noir over, plug it up, and I was like, whoa. Yeah. Never. And I remember listening to it as well afterwards. Yeah. I was like, never heard the Noir like that before. That it was, was impressive. That was like nothing else. So yeah, the second day we saw, we got to experience the craziest sound thing that I think I've ever experienced. I don't know about you, but for me... It was pretty far up there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was the Focal Grand Utopia. Yeah, uh, I had my brain melted. Yeah, that was... Uh, <laughs> the... It's the bass and the way that the bass hits. That is the best bass I've ever heard on anything ever. We are uh, listening to speakers that are probably worth like... More than me. More than both of our salary. Oh, <laughs> easily. <laughs> <laughs> Many times more. Oh, no, no, for the pair. Yeah, for the pair. 200. 200, yeah, 200. 200 for the pair, yeah, that is, that is, that's more than that's we more make. more than we make. Yeah, yeah that is. <laughs> In a year. <laughs> it feels so good. Have you tried? No, no. It feels even better than it. Oh my God. <laughs> what did you do? LC5. Not for me. Really? Yeah. I, I don't know if it's just the setup or what, but it's really dark. This one. Oh no, it's really a dark. dark. Kind of, it's a totally. It's, it's yeah. very dark in the drop. It's yeah. just. It was like very like like super dark for me. <laughs> um, but in like the upper treble, I kind of like some bad air. It's the same tuning as the five, right? The what? Similar tuning to the five. It's all upper mids. Yeah, but this is way shoutier. Even more. Yeah, this is. Right, tell me about the SR Sigma. SR Sigma Pro. 
I don't know, I just really liked the staging on it. How's the comfort? Reasonable, yeah. because it actually has a lot of ear space inside of here, and the driver is on the front-facing side instead of right here. But the whole thing is full of like an insulation kind of padding. Right. So it's a bit strange. This would be um, perfect for a vintage five. <laughs> yes. When yeah. do you think those came out? Well, it says right there, 1977. Yeah. Very nice experience. I just listened to some very interesting speakers in there. The Maestro Utopia Evo. Right, so basically here at Munich we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of the merging between Focal and Name. The dynamic, the, the sound is really alive, vivid and so on. This is really part of the, the name DNA. When they develop electronic, it's all about revealing music and make sure that you really get this kind of dynamic and kind of uh, super live experience. Uh, on the setup we have in that room, consisting in um, Focal Maestro Utopia, EM Evo. They have a bit of an interesting shape with the angles and all of that to them as well, how the different segments are uh, kind of angled differently. I, I assume there's like something behind that too. Yeah, this is another focal key technology it's called the focus time. The idea being that uh, it's a passive time alignment solution built in. Uh, bearing in mind that obviously uh, you have to time align the drivers between each other, uh, meaning here the tweeter is always slightly recessed compared to the bass driver in order to make sure that the uh, sound will reach your ears at the very same time. Golden one. The best cameraman. Amazing. I, I, I did such a good job. I couldn't do it without you. <laughs> that's excellent. That doesn't suck at all. <laughs> that's, that's... I think he needs to control the trouble just a tiny bit more. Yeah. But damn, it's so well balanced. Not shouty. I'm gonna get DMS. <laughs> that's got quite a bit of technical capability. A little bit bright. Yeah, that's that's pretty dang detailed. DMS, Douglas. Excellent. Hi, Andrew. First off, uh, very nice to meet you. I, I have had a very large number of headphones you've been involved in, as I'm sure probably everyone in this building has. <laughs> yeah, um, I think when you are interested in headphones, you yeah. might have some where I had my fingers in. Yeah, I, and that was one of the first, I believe, that I ever got as well. Um, I went through the 580, 600, 650, all of those, and yeah. I've had them as long as I've been able to wear headphones, pretty yeah. much. Um, and the 650 is still my reference headphone? Yeah, I still use that pretty much pretty much every day. So and when I want to hear it, is it good, is it bad? When yeah. I'm working on something, I take my quite old 650. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, Yeah. this is how it should sound, and I have still to work on that one that I'm working on. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been using a pair of 650 probably for at least 10 years now. Well, yeah. you're using it as your reference on the measurement rig as well. Yeah, and my measure, because yeah. so, yeah. uh, I, I do the reviews and all that stuff. So even though there's a whole wall of headphones, I pretty much always put on the 650, and yeah, whenever I'm measuring, I compare to a measurement of the 650, so it's easier for people, because everyone has heard it. So it's like, well, this is how it is next to 650. Yeah. Like, and a lot of producers are using it as their reference right. as well. So uh, we were around with heavies and talking to some producers, and all of them say, hey, yes, I know you, and you have made this headphone. And I'm like, yes. Yeah. After all of that, you've got into a number of interesting projects. So there's the uh, TWS-1. Yes. There's the heavy. Um, I've heard that you had some uh, hand in the uh, Neumann's open back as well. Uh, yes, things. I was involved in that as well. What yeah, that's a in, yes. that's a lot of like new projects. Yeah. Um, so it, <laughs> I guess is this a I guess kind of a big direction you're moving uh, in with this? Yeah, and there are even more. So I'm working for Urbanista. Okay. Urbanista is a completely different thing. So it's more a brand for young persons, more fashion oriented. Okay. But of course, uh, why should I not work for a brand? that to those two young persons and give them good sound. In this case too, I imagine that we'll probably start seeing more uh, rail branded items too. Yes, of course. You know, I'm working uh, with uh, Drop. Mm -hmm. So there's a Drop version of the rail as well. Now here's a, here's a, just a personal curiosity. You don't have to answer this one, but do you think we'll ever see anything um, over ear wired with the yes. rail name on it, yeah? Yes, oh, that's so exciting. It's, it's, it's an oh, idea to, to have something like that. Okay, I have a bit of a curiosity here. So. This is different from anything you've done in the past. Yeah. Just the Grell name on a headphone up front like that. Yes. Um, where, I mean, what led to that? Where, what is this born from? So when I left university, mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to make my own business. Right. At that time, 
and I built speakers at that time, big speakers with uh, just digital input. It was 1991, but I didn't have the money right. to, to start a business. And mm -hmm. at that time, there was nothing like Kickstarter or so. Mm -hmm. That was the right decision to go to Sennheiser, and I had the chance to create a lot of great headphones there. Mm -hmm. And after 27 years, I decided, okay, now I have the chance uh, to make my own thing. Mm -hmm. And so I started to, to work as a consultant for different companies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's my more or less permanent income. And uh, on the other hand, start my own mm -hmm. brand. So in a way, this is kind of like what you've always wanted to do. Yeah, and I can do what I want, of course, it must be not completely crazy, but I can do what I want. Yeah. That sounds exactly like it did. In the like hall. the recording. Or like, like the hall. Exactly like it did in the hall. So overall thoughts? You like it? Um, it's one of those things where I imagine that it measures a bit strange. Some things sounded a bit bright, but the actual like mm. orchestral music, it's it just I'm there. That's that's just like it is sitting there. Awesome. Because awesome. you know we go to the we go to the symphony a lot. Yeah. That's that's an experience. Yeah, if you really like orchestral music. That was my thing as well. Even better with the cue. <laughs> I would imagine. <laughs> it takes to it actually really well. And comfortable too. Yeah. Interesting. Ah, cool. So, uh, so what's this one called? So this is the Envy. Envy. That's our Envy. It's a new yeah. flagship. That's a new flagship. Oh. We just launched it about two months ago. Okay. And that's uh, that's our actually first um, transformer coupled amplifier. Uh, but there is a couple of let's say headphones that are very difficult to drive with mm -hmm. OTL. Susfara so or the Abyss Diana or the the, 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 the the latest of the LCD5, say. Yeah. Um, and this one has yeah 300 B tubes, so clearly, you know, you get up to eight watts of power. Uh, you could drive speakers out of it, so <laughs> it, it, it is a very uh, yeah. uh, it's a big powerhouse, cool. and and it's still tuned in a way that the dynamic headphones, like what he's listening to, it sounds really good with that. So yeah. All right. Backs against the wall, guys. All right, I'm here with DMS. I'm here with Cameron, otherwise known as Golden, Golden Sound, and Skedra. So we're going to talk a little bit about what our favorite... We just finished uh, over at uh, Munich High End. And yes. over here, we're just going to talk about what our favorite things of the of the show were. So let's start with uh, DMS. Uh, what was your favorite thing of the show? Warwick thing set, or things? It, Warwick. <laughs> Warwick the, Acoustics. Warwick Acoustics, the Bravura, I believe it's how it's pronounced. Yeah. Bravura. Yeah, that was a really, really cool headphone, Electrostat. I really liked the sound of it. That was great. Listening to the Grande Utopias was obviously fantastic. Um, the Meze 109 was really cool. And his DAP. Which yeah. is? Uh, low two power gold touch. <laughs> Stoke. <laughs> Those things. But definitely, like, the the Warwick Acoustic Rivera was, like, A+. plus. Yeah. S tier. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and... For me, um, in terms of speakers, by far the best room, and I think Skidra found the yeah. same, was the prototype 777s from uh, Western Electric. That was cool. Those blew my mind. Um, it wasn't really even that close for me, anyway, in yeah. terms of what... The room wasn't that much... Had, didn't have that much treatment and took no. it onto it, but they, they still managed to image perfectly up and down into the sides. And yeah. Th just, those were amazing. Yeah. The, the Warwick acoustic stuff, I love those as well. Yeah. Those were really interesting. I think the most interesting one, and the one that I personally am most interested in, was the RAL Circumoral. Um, mm. the, there was a prototype there which we got to try, and that was, uh, if you took the original RAL, took all the good stuff about it, and then just fixed, you know, the uh, rolled off low end and everything, it's it's fantastic. And I, I can't wait to try the final version of that. Yeah, I love that one as well, uh, even though it was just prototype, but if they can replicate that in the, in the final design, it's just amazing. Otherwise, uh, Felix Envy, that, that oh, amp yeah. is, was amazing. The With the Susvara, that was amazing. Fantastic. Uh, and the on the other side of the show, that, that Zal. Oh, it was Zale, that's right. Yeah, yeah Zale, Michael Zale. Zale. Phenomenal. I don't know how it's doing what it's doing, but it's great. How was your, how was your time in Munich? 
there's an absolutely enormous amount of fantastic gear and getting to try all that is awesome but just getting to spend time with you guys and all the other people that we got to speak to it's it's been such an amazing trip and i can't already can't wait for next year it feels like it's been too short it really does yeah yeah cool. just getting to spend so much time with people everyone is so friendly and passionate it's so clear that so many of these people are not doing things because they're trying to make money they're doing it because they love it and it, it shows <laughs>